On today's episode of the Dorod Messinger Show, Isaiah Bond, Dylan 007, commits to the Longhorns. Texas fans, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. It's greatly appreciated. And check us out at hornsports.com for all the latest mm. in Texas news. Now, Dylan, when I say committed to Texas, it's not just committed to Texas. Isaiah Bond is an Alabama transfer who apparently was ready to dip his toe in the water even, I think, before Saban officially announced that he was leaving. But once Saban announced that he's leaving Alabama and retiring, he made the big jump, Dylan, to the 40 acres. How do you feel about Isaiah Bond's addition by Sark? I mean, it was you could almost say it was a day or two before, Devin, where you kind of knew. I think on a Snapchat story, he was uh, testing out Ferraris in the local Austin area. So I think uh, he was getting the... He was getting the works. But, yeah, I think it's a great get. He was somebody that I um, – watching him in the college football playoff, definitely, like, one of the X factors going into that game, what he was going to be able to do against that Michigan secondary. And he's had good games as well, I believe, during the Texas A&M game. That was his best one where he had seven receptions and 96 yards for a touchdown with a long of 52. So, this he's a burner. Uh, he can beat you with his speed. I know we are talking beforehand where it's kind of similar to Xavier Worthy in a way where you're getting that kind of dynamic playmaker back um, and just kind of similar size and stature. But I think it's exactly what um, Texas was looking for. Um, and I, I only really see this as a pro, especially getting experience in, as well as it's not like he's a redshirt senior coming over. He's a sophomore from Alabama. So he's coming in, it's going to be his junior year. Do you still have one or two years of this guy and just in that system? Yeah, Dylan, why why you steal all my points? I was gonna I was gonna layer those out very I was nicely. Looking at your notes beforehand. Yeah, yeah, he he checked them out apparently, but no, like Dylan was saying, he only has two years of experience in college football, but has been getting starting level snaps last season. Was a starter for Alabama, so not only does he bring experience, but he also Dylan has that eligibility left past after next season, and yes, he was visiting from reports the 40 acres this past weekend so as dylan was saying maybe he's testing out those ferraris during this weekend's visits and uh i guess ferrari dylan has some influence you know that's that's uh all you need to say there but last season for yeah. alabama as a sophomore the five foot eleven wide receiver caught 48 passes for 668 yards and four touchdowns and it seemed like alabama for a time dylan at the start of the, the season struggled with passing as well I think once Milrow got a little more comfortable, the the deep balls were starting to fly. But Bond, you know, Dylan was putting up some numbers, as I'm saying, in a year where Alabama wasn't too comfortable with passing the ball. Now going into Sark's system with someone, of course, who likes to pass the ball and likes to get wide receivers open. It's just going to be a fun year. What do you think? And I was going to say, he's got big-time experience, too. He had that catch uh, against Auburn to win that game in the back of the end zone. So he's got experience just with those type of games that you're going to need in the SEC. And then the more SEC experience you can get on this team, can't help but feel like that's a win. Exactly. And as you said earlier, there's a lot of pros here. I don't really see a lot of cons. Of course, beforehand we were mentioning he's not an Adonai Mitchell type in terms of height or build. But you can't necessarily expect everyone to get that. As we mentioned before, he's more of a Xavier Worthy type who Texas is needing to replace after this past season. Of course, with Worthy announcing to the NFL draft. Some pros, just quickly, Dylan Roy stole most of them, as I talked about earlier, so not too much to add there. But he's a deep ball threat that Texas is looking for. Of course, Quinn Ewers and Bond are going to have to be in the laboratory during the spring, Dylan, and try to get on the same page there so that Longhorns fans can see that connection in the fall. So he's got the deep ball threat. He's experienced. Yet again, eligibility is remaining as well, though. And he can compete right now for Texas' top wide receiver, Dylan. He was the top wide out at Bama already last season. But he can come in as a day one guy, potentially the number one or number two threat. And I also put he's Sark's, quote, type of wide receiver, Dylan. I, I, I feel like he's a carbon copy, at, at least in terms of build and style of many other wide outs that maybe you'd like to talk about. Well, and like Sark, like he's shown, he wants guys to be able to do everything, right? It doesn't want to just be you are specifically a deep ball threat. With Isaiah Bond, that's exactly what he's going to be able to get out of him is that deep ball threat, but also behind the sticks, screen passes, wide receiver screens that he likes to do to open up the passing game downfield. And then Texas is the way that the talent is looking and the speed on this team as they continue to build out this receiving core. 
they're definitely making a name for themselves that against opponents, they're going to be a team where you can't really take your foot off the brakes because at any moment they could score within 20 seconds and they're right back in this game. That's from what I see on this roster is what they're kind of building towards. So again, it fits right into what Sark really wants to do, and that's beat you with speed. And it's funny, Dylan, because we're talking about like the size and types of wide receivers. I'm sure if you lined up a lot of the guys that are in the room right now and then you – you know, took their names away and just had their stats in terms of their builds, you'd probably have a hard time picking which guy's which, which in some ways, though, is a good thing because opposing defenses, they're going to have to be able to cover, you know, the same sort of talented guys in terms of speed and deep ball production, but at multiple positions, not just the uh, number one or number two wide out. Of course, Isaiah Bond, as we said, could likely be or compete for that number one spot at Texas. But he's joining Matthew Golden, the Houston transfer, also a burner deep. Then you also have Jontae Cook, the second, out of DeSoto. He was a freshman last season for the Longhorns. Had a couple of catches doing, but for the most part, Sark, once he has his rotation, he sticks with it. But Jontae Cook definitely is someone that is expected to be playing considerable amount of snaps and likely a starter next season. And then you got Ryan Wayne. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, not Scotty, but he's got the strongest rapport with viewers out of everybody in the group, at least in their starting receiving core right now. Yeah, most likely, at least has the most experience with him. And then you got Ryan Wingo, the freshman, that is incoming right now. I believe it could be an early enrollee. But Dylan, all that to say, a lot of talented guys, and that's only a short list. There are more guys that likely will be competing for spots. Do you think Texas is done though in the wide receiver transfer portal market? I think the more talent, the better, right? You can't, you'll never say no to somebody that's got the exactly what you're looking for. Uh, I think this was huge, though, when we were talking about it in our last video. It was like, just need one more receiver and feels like they're in a way better spot. I think, I don't know if we named it in the video, but Isaiah Bond was a name that came to mind, especially when Staben's retirement news came out. You're like, so who's transferring out of there? Because you know that's going to happen. And he cited that as one of the main reasons why he transferred. So I think if Texas can somehow pull a, a possession receiver, I know a Adonai Mitchell types don't just come out of the hat. I think he's one of a kind, as you'll kind of see him being a projected round one pick. Um, but somebody of that stature that, again, you can rely on those mid-range routes in the middle of the field just to haul in a 10-yard catch for, to, move the, uh, to move the sticks. And the interesting part, Dylan, not the Adonai Mitchell type, but reports were saying that Silas Bolden, the Oregon State wideout, mm-hmm. who's five foot eight, but also just a speedy burner guy who could be using multiple roles, Maybe if you would think somewhat Keelan Robinson-esque, Dylan, but not a running back. Yeah. There was reports that he was visiting the campus this past weekend, the current weekend we're in right now. But, Dylan, I, I don't know yet again. As you said, I don't think Sark turns down any experience. The more the merrier, just to, to build up that room in the competitions as well. But if Bolden is not really in love with Texas, which, yet again, hard hard to not be in love with Texas. And I think... Sark right now is calling the shots, of course, so he's not needing any additional wideouts. If it adds to his agenda and it adds his resume of guys that are in the locker room right now, cool, he'll take them. But if not, like he's not in a position of need. So it might be Bull needing to sell Texas at this point. But would be another big get for the Longhorns, nevertheless. But I don't know. I agree with you. I'd be looking at Alabama for the, some DBs right now, Dylan. I don't know if the Oof. wide receiver room is as... Uh, as big of a need right now, but huge mm-hmm. news for Longhorns. You get 007 in that locker room. But Dylan, any last words? No, like I was saying, Texas is in a good spot in which they're going to the SEC where you're going to kind of need to obviously lay. I'm trying to think about you got to set your reputation early on, right? Where you don't want to just fall into it and you're in the bottom half of the SEC in your first year. You want to set a bit of a tone. And I think they're building towards that. And boosters have money to spend right now, as, as you're seeing. So I think they're definitely in a great spot when it comes to these transfer portal guys. Texas, I feel like, has done a great job positioning themselves to be at the forefront of those races and recruitment. Exactly. Now, how do you guys feel about this addition by Sarkeesian, Isaiah Bond, 007, to the Longhorns? Let us know down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, have a great rest of your day.